Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Under the Palms. In this episode we're talking to Ginny Holder who plays Darlene all about season 13 episode 4. Ginny welcome to Under the Palms and so happy to have you here. I am happy to be here like really happy to be here. So obviously today we're talking all things season 13 episode 4 which is a big Mm -hmm. episode for Darlene. You've got some serious moral conflict going on. I was really thrilled to have that episode because You kind of have Darlene, you know, using her community, using people that she knows to help solve the 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 murder. Yeah, and then, as you say, she goes through a huge emotional dilemma because she trusted, she trusted this person, she trusted Lorette. Absolutely. I mean, so like, tell us a little bit of like, you know, I'm sure obviously we're going out afterwards. So spoiler alert if you haven't watched the episode yet. But but tell us a little bit about Darlene's friendship with Lorette and kind of what goes down. Darlene has known the family for quite a few years. And um, Lorette was the second child. Um, She had a brother before. She had a brother who died. She came from a family which was very, very dysfunctional. The parents were into drugs and alcohol. They weren't good parents. So people in the community would, would look out for the children. So that's how she came to, came to know Lorette. Right, yeah. And yeah. obviously hadn't seen Lorette for a few years. When Lorette's brother died, she went to to his funeral. And, she, and Darlene kind of encouraged Lorette to do better. You know, just to mm-hmm. knuckle down. Her brother brother was into naughty acts out there, but she wanted, Darlene wanted Lorette to do better. Yeah, you're sort of mothering her in a way, like supporting her, yeah. And uh, so it's a personal one. It really is a personal one. And she's quite, and Darlene's very protective over Lorette as well, you know, really protective. And I think Lorette really got to Darlene. I yeah. think of all the episodes, of all the episodes, and ever since Darlene's been a police, I think uh, joined the police force. I think this is the episode that has really challenged her morally. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, is that fun for you as an actor when you get the script and have a read through, and it's like, oh, I've got something I can really get my my teeth into for this one. The more you get those kinds of storylines, the more you can build and expand on your character. And you saw, and then you see different sides of the character. You see, you begin to see their, where their moral compass lies. You understand what their views are on life and society and everything. And um, yeah, we got that with this episode. I do really love that it does seem like the show is increasingly um, really diving into the characters and their own personal lives rather than just like focusing on like the murder. I mean, is that something you've noticed too? We can't, we needed to do that, I think, with the the show because I think that, you know, it's all well and good. We with any show, you need to see the characters, you need to have a feel of who they are, their life. And sometimes when you're just focusing on murders and the characters that are around, surrounding the murder, it just leaves, it becomes a bit unbalanced. We, The audience need to get a feel of, of the main characters and their star, story and their life. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, obviously it's, it's really nice seeing the relationships um, you know the interpersonal relationships in the in the team as well because you and you had that really nice moment with Neville played by yeah. Ralph Little. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, what what's that like? <laughs> it's, it's funny because I think she really cares for Neville, and I think you know Darlene is that type of person that will always take people in under her wing. She she just wants to shake him a bit and just say, yeah, "Come on, on tell <laughs> you know, come on." Live a bit. He's been burned though, Ginny. He was, like, you know, he was going out with a somebody framed him for murder. That's not nice. No, but that she was a lunatic, <laughs> an absolute <laughs> lunatic. But yeah, for her, she would say, "Do you know what? You have to move on. Mm, yeah, you have to move on. Otherwise, life, life just goes on without you." Well, speaking of, obviously, another part of the episode was that he is getting messages from this blog from Sunset Chaser. Ginny, who is Sunset Chaser, please? Do you really think I can tell you? (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Babe, Emmy, I can't tell you you sound such a I would, I would thought you... if I asked with confidence. <laughs> I, I, I loved it, but good try. It ain't gonna happen, baby. Ain't <sighs> happening. Ain't happening. Yeah. Happen. But once you when when that story reveals itself, yeah, it's very it's very funny. But Neville has, shows a lot of strength in that episode when it's revealed. Character strength. But anyway. When it comes out, you'll see. It's a good one. It's a good episode. I can't wait. I can't wait. You wouldn't even be able to imagine who this person is. (laughs) (laughs) There's so many theories. Like the people are are really into it, finding out who Sunset Chaser is. What are they saying about Sunset Chaser? Who do they think it is? There was a lot of talk about it being... um, the the ex girlfriend is it? What's her name? Rebecca in real life. Um, oh. So a lot of people were thinking it was her. So that, yeah. that's also Neville's suspicion that people are thinking maybe it's Florence. No, Florence for really? inner witness protection. You know, oh. Oh. could be, could be, it or could uh, be. it's got to be someone who used to be on the show. Surely, <laughs> maybe it's Ardell O'Hanlon back. <laughs> That'd be funny if it was Ardell. <laughs> <laughs> what else can you tell us about the rest of the series? Um, I mean, are there any more big moments for Darlene? Are there any break the internet moments? Tell me everything. There's an episode that um, focuses on bullying and Darlene's involved in a lot. And somebody comes back to help with the investigation, but I can't say who. But, you know, yeah, that's a really good episode. That's exciting. Really episode. You know, it's not just a murder. It's just situations which are relatable And there are issues that, you know, will get our viewers, our fans thinking. And if they have had situations that have happened to them, you know, we've got lots of things in place so they can get in contact and help and helplines and everything. So, um, yeah, I think that's important to tell real stories, to tell real life stories that people can relate to. Really important. You can see sort of, yeah, you can see your own experience reflected in it. Yeah, for sure. It's a, it's really, really nice to see. Um, and especially this series, it feels like it's doing it a lot more. I, I wanted to ask what your favourite thing was about your character. What's your favourite thing about Darlene? I love Darlene because she loves her community. There's something very much, very community based about her. And her going into the police force, she's now serving the community in a way that she can see changes and she's motherly. She likes to laugh. Yeah. That reminds me actually, obviously Darlene's got a whole thing going on with Naomi at the moment where she's <laughs> taking her out on double dates and things. I mean, I think that um, Naomi and Marlon uh, likes our end game. I think they're going to get together. So, I mean, what's Darlene doing? She's getting in the way of my plans. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> But Darlene has other plans. She just, again, <laughs> wants to get Naomi just out of her shell of just everything being all work 100%. She wants people to have fun, enjoy the other yeah. side of life. I wanted to ask as well, do you consider yourself to be similar um, to Darlene in real life? <laughs> do I consider myself to be similar? Um, there are elements. I have a little nickname. They call me Ginny Hotfoot because, my friends, because I love being out and about and having a good time. I wanted to ask you about the preview for the next episode as well, because it looks very dramatic. We can be seeing Marlon. So we we haven't seen a lot, but we have seen Marlon get like completely knocked out, hit on the head. I mean, what can you, what can you tell us? A lot's going on in Death in Paradise. (laughs) Is Marlon going to die? You'll have to wait and see. Oh, he does it. Come on. Emmy, what do you want me to do? (laughs) (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Tell me everything. You want me to give it all out? I can't give it away. No. Come on. It is in red. I've got the email here. Things that I must... (laughs) 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 And that's one of them. I've got it right there. It says, do not mention what happens to Marlon, please. Thank you so much for joining me. That was so much fun. fun. Loved it. Loved it. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Under the Palms. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave all of your comments and head over to hellomagazine.com for more news about Death in Paradise. And we will see you next week. Bye.